Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the MKM Maximo. This is the titanium version. Uh, there is a slightly less, well, I say slightly, it's, there's a less expensive version of it in micarta and titanium. I will link this right down below. It is absolutely available right now in both variants. Not not every color, but definitely a few uh, different colors of, of both variants. Uh, thanks so much to the gentleman who sent this in for me to review. This will go back to that person when I am done with it. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. Link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This knife is made in Italy. Uh, I want to make sure in the unboxing, I kept saying, so it's a reasonable price, you know, for the materials. And people say, well, the reason why I can get this, these materials for blah, blah. Listen, those knives that you're comparing are made in China. So yes, can you get the same materials for less money? Yes, because it's made in China, right? So if I use wording like that in this review, just understand I do take into consideration where things are made. Uh, it is much less expensive uh, to make this stuff, a lot of this stuff in China. So that's why you see that sometimes. So bear that in mind. Let's go ahead and get a measurement here. This is a Terzuola design. Did I mention that? Pretty cool. We'll talk more about that. Overall length of the Maximo is coming in at a little shy of 8 inches. Not quite. 7.85 inches. Blade length is coming in a bit shy of 3 and a half. It's about 3.3 your cutting edge is going to be about three and a quarter. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. This thing needs to, holy moly, I need to loosen the pivot on that guy. Uh, yeah, it's right about in between, but it still has that kind of full knife presence, right? How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Right about in between, right about. Last but not least, let's do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, which it compares most favor favorably to, and the Benchmade Bug Out. It's got similar lines, actually, to the Bug Out, right? Copy! It's not a copy. <laughs> it's like saying all cars that have round wheels are, are copies, right? No. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it definitely has similar lines to the Bug Out. Um, it's kind of right there in between, but it's, it's closest to the Benchmade Griptilian or Ritter Hogue uh, with, you know, all the size comparisons we do. How's the action on this guy? It's made in Italy, right? If you don't know, a lot of knives that are made in Italy, uh, especially like, like Lion Steel, they're just real tight. Their bearing action doesn't really feel all that spectacular versus the competition, the general competition. They tend to be, I don't know why, but a bit uncomfortable and a bit anticlimactic to flip. This kind of <laughs> has some of those traits, but it's not quite as tight. Like a lot of times I handle a line steel, I'm like, oh great, a line steel that looks really good. How does it flip? And then it's like, no, not good. The truth is, is that the detent feels a little light on this guy. That coupled with the fact that the flipper tab is low profile and pointy makes for a lackluster kind of deployment. And then while it's not as tight as some of the other line steels that I felt, it's, those t it's the combination of those two things that make it just feel... Once you get it right, this is clearly meant to be light switched. It's not, it's still not that satisfying a flip. What we needed here was probably a different shape and probably some jimping and maybe more rounding so that it can be, you know, push buttoned or light switched however you want. But it really, it forces you into one, you know, position. And unless you get it exactly right, it's not going to feel anywhere near satisfying. But it will flip. It's okay. It's not spectacular. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. Not all that thick, just a little thicker than the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 in Para 3. This is really not going to be an overly cumbersome knife in terms of its, you know, it, its shape. Lengthwise, it's a little longer than the Para th uh, 3. Even at maximum height, though, it's still not quite as tall. It's definitely shorter than the PM2. Where it's going to get yet, this version is going to be weight because this guy's full titanium and I don't think... Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, it does have some skeletonization in there. What does it say on the inside here? Oh, made by 
Makita. There you go. I remember reading something about that on the... This will be linked down below so you can get all the specs and information like that. Is that what it really... Is that what it says? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of skeletonization in there. So, the micarta version is going to weigh quite a bit less, I would venture to guess. Sorry about that squeaky noise there. This guy, five ounces? Close. Nope. Eh, I'm quite a ways off. 4.7 ounces. Ratios are not perfect. Not at all. But then again, it's really not that big. I mean, as far as like full titanium knives go, it's really not that bad. So do with that information what you will. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. T8 for the pivot. And then for some reason, they've decided to go with T6 down here. Now, there's only a couple because we have Chicago ends on this side, which is nice, right? Um, but it's just the, uh, you know, the T6 screws and the two Chicago ends. So not that big of a deal. I really wish they were T8, but they're not. As long as you have, you know, some quality tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be okay. It shouldn't be that complicated to take apart. Blade stock thickness. It's actually, a, it's a reasonably thick blade stock. I want to say I read something like 155 to 160 which is, it kind of seems unnecessary, but let's, yeah, 155 thousandths. I don't know why they, they have it that thick, but that's fine, right? We'll talk more about the blade here in a little bit. Um, is that everything? Yeah, I think it is. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So this is a good looking knife and I especially love the frag pattern here. I think this looks really nice. Uh, I think it was well executed and it does provide some meaningful traction and it's on both sides, which is cool. Edges nicely knocked down though. There are some areas that feel a little bit angular and the pocket clip, I gotta be honest, I'm feeling that. It's kind of sharp at the edge and I really don't like that. The knife feels all right. Uh, would have would have really been nice to have some contouring here, but it's it's all right, right? I can't complain too much. Feeling the flipper tab, it's a little bit pointy, but they did knock it down, so it's not the worst thing in the entire world. Disengagement here is easy in the sense that you can gain access to this lock bar because it is you know, raised higher than the show side, but it's also pretty tight. Um, I mean, there's that lock bar has quite a bit of, you know, uh, tension on it. Uh, I mean, what, what's our, what is, it? is that the right way to say it? Lock bar has got a lot of tension. Yeah. Uh, the, the pressure, I guess, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know why I'm dancing around it. So this has been knocked down a little bit, but it really needed to be a bit more. I think honestly, the, the, the tension on the lock bar is just insane it's pretty thick and it's got a teeny tiny relief cut too so that might be part of it you can do it it's fine but it's just it takes extra effort to get it to flip the way that you want and then disengaging it takes a little more strength than you're used to so it kind of feels i mean you can do it i'm not saying you can't do it i'm just saying you're it's it, it tires out your hand right it's not nearly as I'm not saying knives should always be that we should build these things, you know, with the, the couch flippers in mind who like to just sit and open and close things a hundred times, right? And then put them away. <laughs> I'm not saying that, even though I know that that's what the vast majority of you are doing right now. Let's not lie, right? Um, it should be a little bit easier, I think, to manipulate this. It's just kind of tiresome to flip it and disengage it, right? After about 10 of those, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. I mean, you know, using it like a knife and just getting it out and deploying it and using it, you're probably not going to notice it the first time. But after a couple of times, you know, you're definitely going to notice it's everything's just a bit tighter and more sluggish and just more cumbersome. It just requires more effort. So I think it's just a combination of things that need to be changed. You can deploy this with the thumb studs. And honestly, I think that works pretty well. The thumb studs are a little bit pointy. You're going to notice it if you do the reverse flick and you're going to notice it a little bit doing the thumb flick, right? They could have been wider and fatter. I always like to use the rat uh, one, the thumb studs there as an example of a perfect thumb stud. I don't think this knife really needed to have a flipper tab. I think it could have just not had a flipper tab and it would have been fine. And if they insist on the flipper tab, it probably should just not have thumb studs and the flipper needs to be a different shape, right? The easiest way to deploy this, the most comfortable way, is probably with the thumb studs. Now, there's not any double clutch, as you just saw there. It's close, but there's not a double clutch. You can see there's taken just a couple of, you know, wiggles to get it down. It's smooth. It just feels tight, right? Anybody who's flipped a lion steel over and over again, I'm not saying the lion steel is the same. I'm saying that's my 
main experience with other Italian manufacturers is through Lion Steel, and these feel incredibly similar in their sort of tightness, right? So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. Look of everything, fit and finish of everything is good. Pivot color looks good. Seeing the hardware looks good. The blade looks nice. I'm really glad that they went with a tumbled finish and not some gross satin finish that looks super plain. The blade is a simple drop point blade with a nice swedge. There's jimping that extends out to a meaningful area on the blade. And they crown the spine, which is a nice touch unless you're striking flint off of it, in which case you'll find that to be frustrating. Um, the final cutting bevel looks pretty good. Um, it's... I think in just a couple of areas, it might appear slightly wider in a couple areas, which is on this side. Yeah, a little bit. It might have slight, very, not really, though. The actual cutting edge is pretty thick. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, they insisted on a fairly prominent flat, 155 thousandths for the blade stock, and then not a super aggressive taper down to the cutting edge. So the geometry of this blade is pretty robust. <laughs> Um, we are looking at M390 steel. You can see right there. So how is this M390 heat treated versus some of the other problematic M390 that we've been seeing here lately and honestly, you know, for quite a while? I don't know. I don't know if this is heat treated in the same place that some other Italian uh, knife makers and knife uh, OEMs heat treat their stuff. I, I honestly don't know, right? The range that people like to see M390 in is around the 62 area. Uh, I know a lot of people will just sort of accept like at least 60 and then, you know, generally speaking with M390, people don't consider it to start being problematic uh, until it drops to 59 or lower. But I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, all I can say is, is that the geometry of this blade is a bit thick, a bit robust for M390, right? Uh, I think uh, M390, when it's heat treated correctly, does a lot better with a much thinner geometry, definitely, since it's not a steel that's known for being tough at all. Um, it's really just high corrosion resistance and high potential edge retention. So a thinner geometry, one that's meant for slicing and continuous slicing, will probably do better. This is a bit robust, so hmm, do with that information what you will. It says MKM on the blade, and then it says Man uh, Maniago, Italy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. M390. And on this side, Terzuola design. Uh, and that's it. So that's fine. Now, it's pretty minimal bill billboarding there. We have a lanyard hole, a big old lanyard hole. There's a glass breaker thing back here, but it also comes with the tool to remove that and just sort of a flat screw so you don't have to have the glass breaker. It's completely and totally up to you, right? The pocket clip is not milled. It's just a sort of stamped out steel clip. I wish that it had a, a 3D milled uh, pocket clip. It would help just, I mean, I understand, you know, inflation is causing the price of all of this stuff to go up. It doesn't really matter. It's made in China, made in Italy, made in the United States. I mean, the price of everything is going up, right? Would have been nice to see a 3D, uh, to have seen a, a 3D milled clip anyway. This clip is meh. It carries deep, but we have one of these where it's straight and then it's a swoop and then it's straight again, right? Um, so this is going to fight some pocket seams. If the pocket seam is thicker than the distance between the surface of the scales and the tip of the uh, clip bill here. Um, but, you know, if it's not, then getting it in and out of the pocket shouldn't be too bad. The surface of the titanium is fairly smooth, even with it being textured. So it's just going to be one of those things. It depends on what kind of pants you're wearing. Exposed frame lock, you do have to watch out for where you're putting your fingers, especially on this. This knife seems to be particularly sensitive to incorrect finger placement while you're flipping, given that, again, you kind of have a weak shape for the flipper tab. You kind of have a like, just a lot of general tension with the uh, frame lock, you know, and then it's the pivot is also really tight. I mean, yeah, you could loosen the pivot up, but then you have to recenter it and find, I mean, you can do that, but... A lot of times with these knives, I found that in order to get the blade centered, uh, you just have to deal with some general tightness, right? So I don't know. Uh, it just feels like that lock bar tension is quite heavy. And if you get your fingers anywhere near, I mean, if you get your fingers on that, there, I just did it right there. My finger was on that lock bar and I gave it a good, honest flip and it just did not want to do it, right? So it depends. If you're putting too much pressure on the lock bar on this knife, it definitely will not flip. We have a gigantic steel lock bar insert that is doubling as the over travel stop, which is nice. I appreciate that. We have a stop pin that is located internally and it's not attached to the blade. It's attached, it's pinned between the two pieces of titanium rides on a channel on the blade, which is fine. That's a good way to do that. 
No uh, blade play up, down, left, or right at all. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Smooth, but tight. Um, the detent is kind of, eh, it's not, it's not a very strong detent. It's kind of a medium, medium light detent. And then your tip on this guy is not centered. Um, now, this is somebody else's knife. They may have used it a little bit, but it honestly looks like a pretty new knife. And it truthfully doesn't surprise me that it's off center. I handled another, I was at the Gotcha from MKM and I really liked it. It was really cool, right? It felt different than a lot of the other Italian knives that I had handled. This knife feels a lot like a lion steel, much more like a lion steel than the Gotcha, I think was the, it's the G-O-C-C-I-A. Um, I really like how this looks and I am a fan of the uh, Terzuola aesthetic. It just has a lot of these sort of corks that I, the reason that I don't really like a lot of lion steel stuff is because it all kind of feels like this. It's very, you know, it just feels very not satisfying to manipulate. Everything feels tight and just clunky and slow and just my wrist starts to hurt after a while because of the extra muscles you have to use to disengage the lock bar. I'm, I'm gonna get all these people jumping up. Well, what you need to do is toughen up your hands. See, what I like to do is I like to go outside and squeeze apples and make applesauce all day because my hands are so tight. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Knives should be easy to manipulate, right? Whether you're sitting there flipping them a hundred times over and over and over again, or you're just getting them out once to make a quick cut, right? Knives should not just be hard to open so that we can all feel really good about how strong our hands are and then rush out to tell people the first time someone complains about a knife being a little bit too tight to open. The whole reason that we invented one hand opening mechanisms throughout the years is so that knives could become more convenient. Knives can be convenient and tough, right? It, they can be convenient and strong. It's not like you have to have things being overly tight or clunky in order to have a durable design. No, we can have both of those things. So spare me your apple crushing stories. I don't care. My <laughs> I don't I don't necessarily have delicate hands, right? But it, this is just a little did you see there like I, I've got this subconscious urge to use wrist. You can see it when I'm not thinking about it, right? Um yeah. Uh I don't I don't know who's where these are actually being I mean I know they're being manufactured in Italy, but I, I don't know the story behind the OEM or the factory, if it's shared between different I have no idea. But there's there's some there's some similarities here that I see with a lot of, you know, this caliber of Italian knives, and it's like pivot tightness is too much. Lock bar tension is too much. Flipper tabs are always a ridiculous shape that don't complement the weight and mass of the blade or the detent strength at all. It's everything it just feels a little bit out of whack here. It's a cool knife. It looks good, right? The people who buy it, you're, I mean, if you if you decide that you you know really like how this looks, you want to buy it. It's something you will adapt to, right? But this could be better, definitely. I mean, everything could be better, but this could be a whole lot better. This just feels like it feels like something that came out in 2012 or 2013, right? It's just it, it's okay as far as the materials and the execution materials, like the overall fit and finish. We are looking at 200 to 250 dollars. Like that's a reasonable territory for this knife. And again, that word it, it, it ruffled some fe feathers in the unboxing. But reasonable, reasonable. I can get the same materials for 100 from China. I'll stop you right there and just fill in the blanks. That's what you're talking about. You're talking about knives from China. However, those knives, you know, a lot of that stuff. Detent, action, all that stuff is figured out. It's the, all of that is complementing. It's all, all of those elements are complementing each other and allowing for a nice, easy uh, means of deployment and manipulation. It's possible that I got a weird one here, but I don't think so. Um, the gotcha felt better. Still was a little kind of like that, right? Um, it felt better though, but this is okay. It's not something that I'm, you know, it's not something I feel like you got to rush out and go buy. It's not something I'm going to say is extremely recommended or anything like that. It's a neat knife, um, but it's just, it's frustrating that it looks so good and it just has some of those little corks that just drive me nuts. So 
Anyways, I think that's gonna be pretty much it for today. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody, and have a great day.